So I want to do a very short video about olive oil and uh, it's one of the superfoods I think. Yeah, I always talk about the four oils that I recommend that we should eat that are very healthy. There's the butter, avocado oil, coconut oil and olive oil. And I eat a lot of butter, I eat a lot of avocado oil, I cook with avocado oil all the time. The one I'm neglecting is olive oil and that's really a mistake I think and I'm trying to make an effort to use more olive oil actually. I've been using it a little bit like on, in, in, in like a vinaigrette dressing but I want to start making mayonnaise with it and use it in some different forms because it's a fantastic oil. Um, it is a monounsaturated fat, a monounsaturated fatty acid. And that just means basically it has one double bond in there. And I want to explain a bit what that is. It's like a bit of chemistry, but when we think about a saturated versus unsaturated fat, just an, as an example, we always draw them like this. It just means you have these carbon atoms and you know carbon has uh, four bonds that usually in a, in a chain like this bonds to another carbon and the chain keeps going like this. And then here you have hydrogen atoms and then it's, it's saturated. Saturated means that the carbon atoms are saturated with hydrogen. And then at the end, at its head or tail or whatever you want to call that, the last uh, 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 bond, if you want here, you have actually something like this. You have a double bond to an oxygen and then here you have an uh, OH group. So. These chains are very long and they kind of look like this long, 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 long. And then you have your uh, tail here, which is basically something looking like this. So saturated fatty acids make like a long line. So basically they, they compact very easily. And one thing to remember is at room temperature, if a fat is a solid, it's usually saturated fat. I mean, it's as simple as that. So that means at room temperature, when you think of these and you have several of these, lying together, they're going to line up like this. And so you're going to have them compacted and they become a solid. So they're not, they're not liquid anymore. Now, uh, by contrast, if I now have a unsaturated uh, fatty acid, it's not completely saturated with hydrogen atoms. And what that means is that you have essentially kinks in it. So you have these bonds and suddenly you have like a double bond and then it kinks in some direction. You might have another double bond and it kinks again. Now, if you imagine, and it's not two dimensional, it's three dimensional, it's kinks in different directions, right? When that's the case, even at when you compact these and you have another one that's here somewhere, and so you get, get the picture. So basically you can compact them as well. So don't, they don't line up very flat on top of each other. And therefore, uh, basically when you have an unsaturated fatty acids, it's usually liquid at room temperature. That's one thing to remember. An issue is whenever you have a, um, um, basically an unsaturated fat, there are parts where they can oxidize. So when they're not saturated, they oxidize easier. And we know that saturated fats are very stable. And you think of coconut oil as one of the saturated fats, you know, it, you know, leave it at room temperature, nothing happens to it and so on. Olive oil is a monounsaturated, so it has one, one double bond in there, but it doesn't oxidize very well. It actually is a very stable fat, fortunately. It behaves differently than some unsaturated fats. Fats that are very um, unstable and easily uh, oxidized are, for example, fish oil. Those are polyunsaturated fatty acids. And the issue with fish oil is, I like fish oil, but, uh, and I was for a while taking fish oil supplements. And that's a bit of an aside. I think there are benefits to it, omega-3 fatty acids, so that's really good. But the problem is they oxidize very easily. And when you have uh, fish oil, you know this, fish oil, if you leave it sitting out, it's gonna go rancid, it's gonna go bad very fast. Um, and the issue is when you get them in these little gel capsules, you don't know how long it's been in there, how it was processed. And if you consume oxidized fatty acids, there might be some adverse uh, health issues with it. So for me, I just don't eat the supplement anymore. Uh, once in a while I eat fish. I'm not good about it, but it's probably better to eat the, eat the fish. Anyway, so more unsaturated fatty acid benefits, and I'm going to link some studies to this. It has been really fantastic. It's really been shown to decrease the risk of stroke, cancer, type 2 diabetes, and blood pressure. So lowest blood pressure. So it's a very, very uh, powerful um, oil that can have huge benefits for your health. And I think it's, it's really a fantastic superfood oil, honestly. Um, Anti-inflammatory. So it kind of acts like a natural ibuprofen. There is a, a you know, a cyclooxygenase enzyme activity blocked. And we know that activity is blocked by, for example, ibuprofen, by, by aspirin. There's um, uh, blockages of this. So it kind of acts like a natural anti-inflammatory without a lot of the adverse uh, effects that you would have when you take uh, ibuprofen, for example. Um, it's high in oleic acid and that's interesting. There's a lot of chemistry. I'm going to really simplify this. So if you have more of a knowledge of 
the pathways, this is a very simplified form, okay, I apologize for it, but I think in order to understand it, I think it's just good to simplify it and say, well, what happens, what's the end product when we, when we look at these enzymatic uh, reaction chains? So um, <clears throat> the oleic acid gets converted to an, a, a, a compound called OEA, and OEA activates enzymatic pathways. So one of the things that it does then, in, in essentially, in the end, it turns on the conversion of white fat to brown fat. And that is actually hugely important. We want brown fat. So brown fat is brown because it's very rich in mitochondria. And I keep talking about mitochondria in other, in other videos. Mitochondria is hugely important. Again, it's where the energy in our cells is generated, but it's also hugely important for uh, cell health. And we know that, um, well, there's several theories and several papers kind of show this, that uh, cancer is more likely to be linked to damage in mitochondria rather than, and that's also part of it, though, in the mitochondria, sorry, in the, the DNA damage in the nucleus of the cell. So it seems like the mitochondrial health is really, really intricately related to our cell health over, overall and development of diseases. So um, in here with um, olive oil, it really protects um, this oxidative damage to the DNA and, and specifically in mitochondria. It's a hugely important thing. Um, I talked in other videos a bit about it, but damaging mitochondria is one of the things that we think is at the root of all bad diseases as we know them. So protecting mitochondria is key and olive oil does this. So olive oil is very, very helpful for mitochondria. Um, it also allows lipid mobilization. So again, it does a lot of things that help us lose fat and lose uh, uh, um, bad fat and convert bad fat to good fat. For all practical purposes, white fat is just storage. It's basically metabolically very slow. It just wants to sit there and do nothing. Brown fat is expending energy. It produces heat, it's active, and it makes us lose uh, weight over, over time. White fat, store fat, and brown fat, burn fat in the end. Yeah, I mean, it's a good thing probably to think about this. It's rich in polyphenols. So all of us are very rich in polyphenols, and that can, again, reduce oxidative damage to the DNA. We talked about that. Um, part of a Mediterranean diet, you know, um, it's it's a weird thing. I mean, you know, the definition of Mediterranean diet, I think actually olive oil is the key thing that's good for us in the Mediterranean diet and probably fish, some other things in there, plus minus. But that's definitely one of the parts that has been shown to be, to be very good and very, very healthy. Um, so how do we use olive oil? So again, now we know it's, it's very good. It's one of the fatty acids that it doesn't, it doesn't oxidize. It is very stable. It's very healthy. It can reduce risk of many diseases. It can help us lose weight, it can help us uh, lose fat. Actually, one more thing, it actually also kind of is a really, um, uh, it, it decreases cellular aging, we should say. I don't even, didn't even write this down here. But that's another important thing. And that's, uh, uh, as an anti-aging uh, uh, nutrient, I think it's, it's a very important one. So we should all eat more olive oil, there's no question about it. Should be extra virgin olive oil. And the difference is, so extra virgin olive oil means usually it's, it's cold pressed and also it's the first time they press it. So when you think about it, olive oil is really, you they grind it up and press it and the oil comes out. Different than seed oils. Remember, I talked always about, I don't like seed oils. Seed oils are very damaging. Seed oils, they need chemicals to extract the oil. With olive oil, that's not the case. They actually just grind it and press it. And extra virgin just means it's the uh, oil that comes out of the first press. Then they, you know, whatever is left over, they're gonna press again. And they might also, if it's a very cheap process, they might use chemicals to extract the rest of the oil as well. But the uh, extra virgin means it's the first time they pressed it, whatever oil they collect, and it's usually cold pressed. So it's not treated, it's not heated or anything like that. So it's a, that's a very pure process. So it should be extra virgin olive oil, always, always in a glass bottle. And I talk about this in other videos. When you have an oil in contact with plastic, that's a terrible idea. Because again, like dissolves like, you have uh, an oil in a uh, plastic bottle. Plastic is made, is made from oil, and unfortunately petroleum oil and they dissolve each other a bit. So you have these phenols and you have these, um, sorry, phthalates, and you have these bisphenols leaking in there. And that's really horrible. Again, these are hormone disruptors. Um, so when you have an oil stored in a plastic bottle, you have a lot of them in there. Glass bottle, and uh, again, extra virgin olive oil, make sure it's 100% olive oil. It's highly misleading. If you go to the supermarket, it says olive oil, and you read it, oh, there's canola oil in there as well, and, and, and soybean oil, and those are horrible oils. So it should be pure olive oil, should be extra virgin olive oil in a, in a, in a glass bottle. And then again, the vinaigrette dressing is a simple one. I'm not a cook by any means. I hardly um, you know, mix stuff, but I'm gonna make an effort to do this one, the, the mayonnaise, and I'm gonna talk about that. But vinaigrette, that's pretty self-explanatory. You take olive oil, vinegar, you take salt and pepper, 
<clears throat> and whatever else spices you want in there. And that's fantastic on your salad. A mayonnaise. So you can use two eggs, whole eggs, make sure they're absolutely uh, fresh. Because again, they don't get really cooked. So there is a risk of salmonella if you have eggs that are kind of on the verge of spoiling. So I'd be very careful with that. So two eggs and then, and these amounts can vary. That's just something how I generally make it. Two tablespoons of white uh, wine vinegar, quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil that's slowly mixed in. You're using like a blender. And I'm gonna do a video uh, where I'm showing how I do this. Um, and then slowly, slowly blend it. Um, of course, and you add uh, salt and you can add pepper if you want to other spices. But this is a superfood. <clears throat> this mayonnaise here, I mean, this is fantastic and you can eat it with, with, with anything you really make. And based on the spices you put in, you can make it to your, to your taste. Some people even put mustard in there. So anyway, these are two things how I will sort of uh, try to increase my intake of, of olive oil. Um, and I think it's a fantastic oil. I've neglected it. I think it's uh, important that we include it in our diet and uh, Hopefully this helps and when you go shopping next time, maybe think about getting some extra virgin olive oil.